Hello, 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 Martin here with the second part of this week's Ask Martin Anything. Your chance to ask me anything. We really thought about the title of this before we did it, you know? Can you tell? Well, ask Martin Anything because you're going to ask me anything. Uh, so let's start with Christopher Beacock with a case in point. Hi, Christopher. Hi, Christopher. Where do you... Why don't I say hi, Christopher, twice? I don't know because I thought he said hi, Martin, but he didn't. So I preempted in the beginning which wasn't there. Where do you stand on... <laughs> for a very off-the-wall question. Where do you stand on pineapple on pizza? It's a bit unusual, isn't it? Do you like it? So why does pineapple on pizza get such a bad rap? I mean, admittedly, it is the only fruit that generally appears on a pizza because there's like, you don't ever see like nectarines or mandarin. What are those things you get in tins? Orange, when they're little. What's that called, a tangerine? But they're not called tangerines when they're in a tin, are they? Put a picture up. Mm. Well, of course, I can't see it because that's put in afterwards. Whatever. Anyway, the point is that you don't ever get those on pizzas. So it's just pineapple. I, I, you know, I actually only on a Hawaiian, right? Which is obviously pineapple and uh, ham. I think it works on that and I like the, the, the combination. So yeah, go for it. Oh, David. Hi. I'm currently in hospital. Have you ever had the pleasure of kidney stones? No, I haven't. But I do know people who have and they say they are pretty painful. That's an understatement, right? I'm so sorry, David. They are, yes. Ouch. I don't even like to think about it. About it but I think isn't it something to do with how they get out it's like yag if you're a bloke you know what I mean uh nightmare anyway I wish you well mate no I haven't had them touch wood Kevin Smith <laughs> what are the tactics developers you will use on you to make you sell if you're in a ransom strip will they try to make your life a misery well yeah they can't they can try and be aggressive uh, as in obnoxious towards you, but you can't, they, can't sell you, they can't force you to do anything. A ransom strip, in case you don't know, is generally a small piece of land that in itself is pretty much worthless, but it stops somebody doing something. So let's say you own a bit of land, 10 acres of plowed development, but there is a bit of land which is four feet wide by 10 feet long, and it stops getting access to that bit of land. Then your bit of land, which is intrinsically is worth 500 quid, is actually stopping them building a multi-million pound development. So you could turn around and say, well, actually, I want a million quid for that bit of land. And it depends on which they want to develop the bit. So, you know, no, uh, if people start getting funny with you, well, that's, you know, that's not, not on. You've got the ransom strip, they haven't. So you, the ball is in your court. Uh, you are wearing the whatevers. Matt Sheen, hello Matt. How come you only ever do the lower buttons on your long coats, leaving the top four or five down? Now don't you start. Mo Gilligan had a right go at me because of how I do up my coats. I don't know. I just like the way it looks. Let me see this body language. Is there some kind of sartorial rule that says I can't do up the lowest button? I mean, honestly, you get these designer fa Uh, Liz, hello Liz. What are you having for your tea? Uh, oh, tea. You know what we, used to, you know, tea, you, you must be from um, uh, the north. I think there's a difference because in the south they call tea dinner. I was I was from the north um, and uh, you have your tea at like five o'clock, six o'clock and maybe dinner is something you have later. So tea, tea, tea was always, tea always reminds me of growing up. So I'd probably be having, oh, sausage and chips and beans or beans on toast or whatever beans on toast you know you either it's so interesting isn't it i hate beans in the morning right for breakfast well but beans on toast for lunch or dinner yum 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 so tea time would probably be beans on toast scouse wit hello scouse scouse twit oh, okay i was say scouse wit what's your favorite band or artist well interesting i mean in terms of who i've seen when you remember live music oh please can't wait Rolling Stones were amazing, right? I actually saw the Rolling Stones in Cardiff a couple of years ago. Took Scott, my son. I was really impressed by the fact that Mick Jagger was really communicating with the crowd. I've been to some concerts where the people don't talk to the audience and it's just like you might as well go and listen to the album. I found that really annoying. But no, Mick Jagger was amazing and he just spoke to everyone and it was like really there and was talking about having been out in Cardiff and da da da. So he really sort of felt like he was making the effort. Um, so they were really great. Robbie Williams was brilliant when I saw him. Bruce Springsteen, saw him at Glastonbury, uh, amazing. All live stuff. You know, I like music. I like live music. Actually, here's, a, but here's an artist who probably is the most if I had to pick out one artist, uh, just generally, almost, almost not a lot of people know about, but but I absolutely love this guy called Al Stewart. Most famous for a song called Year of the Cat. But he did loads of other stuff. There's an album called Time Passages. If you get a chance to listen to it, it's truly amazing. He's got a very interesting voice. But his music is just, and, and it, but it works. And it's just phenomenal. 
and he's got lots of you know, the, the lyrics are really interesting and all sorts of stuff. Um, Mad Mal Melanie, hello, Melanie. Um, hi, Martin. How do you feel after having your COVID vaccine? Any symptoms? Uh, so I had a very sore arm for three days. No feeling specifically of, of illness. Now I've got my second one coming up in a bit, so I'm hoping that that will be okay. I that you I won't get any reactions to that, but you never know. Fingers crossed. Tom, hello, Tom. Martin, what can I do in a wet room floor in the bathroom? What's the best thing to do with it? Get it up, ripped up or not? Right. I'm a big. I'm quite a fan of wet wet room floors. What? They, uh, is it failed? Has it? Has it? Has it sort of is it a problem i mean I, if, they, if they are still working and still sealed and all that stuff then i think they're actually quite a good thing wet rooms uh, i think it's a good thing to have paul mia i'll say this one even though he gets my name wrong <laughs> has anyone ever taken a property or renovated it lost features or devalued the house robert <laughs> do i look like a robert a bob <laughs> i wouldn't mind being a bob Bob's quite cool. Sorry, has a taken a property on renovated lost features in developed house? Uh, people don't generally lose a lot of money. What they do do is they spend too much and they don't recoup everything that they've put into it back. But certainly, taking out original features is not good news. Scylla Pearson, hi Scylla. Hi Martin, if you could go back in time, is there anything you would change or do differently? You know what, that's a really interesting question. Um, uh, you know, I'm a great believer in fate. You know, there's lots of mistakes I've made in the past, like we all have, and there's lots of times which have been absolutely rubbish. But you know what? You just have to think, well, focus on the good stuff that if there is any in your life, hopefully there is, and think, well, I wouldn't have had that if it hadn't been for such, such, such and such. So I'm not sure about changing the, the past. There's obviously bits and pieces and things that I'd do differently. Yeah, that's a poignant question, isn't it? You know, you are where you are. It's not like you do it. PDX. Hi PDX. Hi Martin, will you marry me? Well, I'll just take my wife and see what she says. And, and we obviously we don't know that much about each other. I mean, obviously I do with my wife, but I don't know about too much about you. So I think we probably need to, there's a few steps we need to go through before we um, we get to that point, you know, with the following wind and um, a few bits and pieces sort out this end. Probably minimal chance, but I, I thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> PDA. Dell, hello Dell. When will Holmes and Hammer stop go? This is, oh yeah, he's, he's written unfinished in capital letters. That means he's like shouting. When will Holmes and Hammer stop going back to unfinished projects? Nothing winds me up more. Nothing at all winds you up more in life. Somebody nicking your car parking space just as you're about to go into it. Somebody pushing in the queue at Tesco's. But nothing more than Holmes and Hammer going back to unfinished projects winds you up. Wow. Well, I'm delighted, Del, that, that your life is otherwise so completely and utterly unwind upable or unwound up. That's just great. I will have a word with the team and see what we can do. The thing is, we should leave things for so long, but we, at some point we have to go back. But if we can, we go back, uh, if we can, uh, to leave it as long as possible. Anyway, there we go. Martin, final two questions. Have you ever reviewed a haunted house? Yes. One house we went to definitely was super spooky. We were doing the interview and a light bulb fell out of the light fitting and it landed on the floor three feet away from where it should have landed by the force of gravity. Yeah, we got out of that place pretty quick, I tell you. And when we went back, they'd actually demolished it. So I think they found that there was a few issues as well. Final question from Jack Samuel Hinton. Hello, Jack. Hi, Martin. Have you ever ridden a BMX? I haven't, and I think I would be an absolute disaster. I once fell off a, a scooter, which I was trying out, uh, my son had just got, and it was the start of a holiday, and I fell off it and slashed my toe. And it just goes to show that, that, um, that older gentlemen should not play around on kids' toys. BMX I put in that category. However, mountain bikes, oh yes. I love mountain biking. It's a newfound passion. Mountain biking and paddle boarding are two sports which I can definitely relate to, as long as A, I get a lift to the top of the hill to come down, and B, it's not windy and I don't have to do too, too, too much effort to paddle, because I'm not that keen on sports which actually make you get out of breath, which is terrible, really. <laughs> What admission. Anyway, listen, that's it for this week. I hope you're well. I wish you uh, sunshine and uh, a move towards uh, freedom from all this rubbish, which seems to be at least unfolding. Uh, make sure you uh, like this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And uh, Ask Martin Monday is the, the hashtag for Mondays when you can ask me anything on Twitter at TV Martin Roberts. But for now, look after yourself. <laughs>